In this video, I'm gonna be explaining how to create a custom object in Salesforce. I go over the setup and how to see it in the front end of the system as well. Welcome to the channel, my name is Nick. Thank you ever so much for giving this video a watch. Hopefully it will be of value to you. Just before we get into the video, if you need any help at all setting up Salesforce for your business, check out my website below. We would be delighted to help. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. As I just mentioned, in this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to create a custom object inside of Salesforce, and then how to see that custom object and create records in the custom object. So what we firstly need to do is go to the cog in the top right-hand corner, and we wanna to go to the setup page. So go ahead and press setup, and then you'll be presented with this screen here. Now on the left-hand side, we wanna go under platform tools to objects and fields. Go ahead and click the down arrow, and then click Click Object Manager. Now you'll be presented with this page here, and this is gonna show you all of the current objects inside of the Salesforce system. What we want to do is go to Create in the top right-hand corner and go ahead and press Create Custom Object. Go ahead and click that, and you'll be gonna be presented with this page here. Um, the, the front end of Salesforce is on Salesforce Lightning, the back end is still on Salesforce Classic. So just go ahead and press click here to open page in Salesforce Classic, and you're going to be presented with this screen here. Now, this may seem very overwhelming, but trust me, I'm gonna walk you through everything. It's super, super simple. So firstly, we need to give our object a name. So I'm just gonna call this example object for the time being. Now, as you can see here, we've got label and plural label. So what that allows us to do is example object and example objects or whatever it may be. So as you can see for account, we've got account and then accounts plural, of course. So once you're happy with that, we've then got the starts with vowel sound. You can tick or untick that if you would like to. We've then got the object API, which is automatically filled out when you put in the label. You can change this if you would like to. You can also put in a description that refers back to the objects or what it's for, uh, again, and tidy up to you if you would like to. We've then got this option here. I would leave this as selected as the open standard salesforce.com help and training window. I know that's a bit of a mouthful. I would just leave that ticked. And then moving down the page, we've got the record name. So this is what the record is gonna be called. So as you can see, you've got like account name. It's gonna be example object name. Does it say contact name, opportunity name, but you can change this if you'd like to. So if you just wanna call it example name as opposed to example object, whatever you're creating it for, then you can do that. And we also get a choice of deciding what the name of the record is going to be. So we can select the data type as being text as it is now, but we can also use this drop down menu and select auto number. So that will be an automatically generated number. And if you do choose to use this, I have done a separate video on how to set up and display the auto number stuff. So check out that on my channel. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that in this this video. So I'm going to move it back to text and then we've got some optional features just below. So I would select pretty much all of this, allow reports, allow activities, track field history, allow in chatted groups, enable licensing. So I would tick all of this. This is this will allow you to create reports on the custom object. This will allow you to create activities on the custom object. This will allow you to track the field history data that's changed on the custom object and allow chatter. So that's the communication system within Salesforce. It will allow you to do that inside of Salesforce as well. Now there are reasons why you might want to untick these. Let's say you don't want to create reports for this particular object then you just untick it it's entirely up to you and then we've got object classification now I'm not going to go into much detail on this in the video um, if you are watching this video it's not probably not going to be applicable but we've got API access and API API setup for this object if you would like to and then we've got deployment status so you can say deployed or in development in development is essentially sandbox where you're developing the custom object if you press deployed then it goes live to the system so be careful which one you do choose to select and then we've got search status so this allows you to search records on this object throughout the entire system so if you're going to be using this object every single day and it's going to come part and parcel of your Salesforce system, like uh, like contacts, leads, opportunities, would also, I would tick allow search. So it's then searchable content. So any new records added to the object can then be searched across the system. 
And we've also got object creation options. We can add notes and attachments related lists to default page layout if you'd like to and launch new custom tower wizard after saving the custom objects. So you've got those two options here. I'm gonna add the notes and attachments which will allow me to save notes and attachments to this particular uh, object. So every time I create a record, I can save notes and attachments to that record. So once you're happy, all you need to do now is just press the save button and congratulations, you've now created your first custom object and obviously we've created the example object i'm sure you probably called it something different now let's head back to the salesforce page and let's just refresh the screen you will notice that it doesn't exist so you've now refreshed the page and you may be wondering well where exactly is my custom object my the example object in my case that i just made it's not in the menu up the top here if i go to the button up the top left hand corner and search example object it doesn't exist i can't add it to the navigation bar well let me show you how to do that as well so if we go to the custom object tab that we were just on you'll be presented with this screen here now what we need to do is go to the quick find up the top left hand corner and just search t tabs and then you want to go to create and then just go to tabs okay you can use you can find it under the build area as well as you can see and we want to create a custom object tab super super simple as you can see here we've got custom objects tab up the top go ahead and just press the new button and then we need to select the custom object we're creating the tab for. As you can see, I've only got one, so I'm just gonna select my example object. And then we can select a tab style. So this is gonna be like the emoji kind of thing on the left-hand side when you create a new record. Uh, I'm just gonna, you can choose one that's most applicable, but in this case, I'm just gonna choose, let's say laptop, for example. And then you can select a splash custom link if you have one, and you can also add a short description for the tab, but I wouldn't worry about this at all. Then go to the bottom right hand corner and press the next button. And then you're gonna be presented with this screen here. And this is for the profiles. Now, if you would like to create different profile and access to this custom object, this is where you're going to do it. So if you select apply different tab visibility for each profile, and then you can select the visibility. So let's say for the standard user, I do not want them to be seeing. So I'll just select tab hidden. So standard user will never be able to see this particular custom object, whereas every other user inside of the system will. I'm just gonna leave it as default on, and I'm gonna say apply one tab visibility to all profiles just for the sake of this video, but hopefully you see why this is useful. Once you're happy, just press the next button. And then you do not need to worry about this for the custom apps. Just go ahead and press save. Now, congratulations, you've also created the tab for your example object, whatever custom object you have just created. So let's head back to the home page on Salesforce, press the refresh button, and you'll be pleased to hear that the example object has appeared up the top, as you can see. And if you go to the top left hand corner and search example objects or whatever your custom object has been called, you'll see it here. You can click onto it, it will take you to the objects area and this is where we can now create a new object and as you can see we just need to enter example object name which is what we set out when we were creating the object so hopefully this video has been useful and i will see you in a moment's time Hopefully you have now successfully set up your custom object inside of Salesforce. If you have enjoyed the video or found it at all useful, please consider giving it a like, possibly even subscribing. If you have any additional questions, feel free to drop a comment below or you can email me as my details are in the description below and I'll do my absolute best to answer any questions you do have. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you shortly in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.